If you clicked on this video, then you might be in a slump. Maybe everything is starting to feel like a burden. Maybe even the simplest tasks like washing the dishes or making your bed feel monumental. Maybe you've stopped working out and you're staying up too late. And then cause you stay up too late, you're sleeping in too late. And then you're just in this vicious cycle. Maybe you even start waking up every morning with the slightest feeling of dread. Trust me, I have been there. We've all been there. We all get into ruts sometimes, it's okay. But here's how to get out of it. Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and become their best self, live their dream life. So if that's something you wanna do, you should subscribe and stick around. So if you're in a rut, you might be feeling like you have no motivation, no inspiration, just lower energy. Maybe you have more negative thoughts than usual. This video is gonna help you turn that around. This video is gonna help you get out of that negative cycle that's keeping you perpetually stuck. It's a simple five step process that I'm gonna walk you through in a sec but before we get into that i first want to take a second to thank audible for sponsoring this video and supporting this community audible offers an amazing selection of audiobooks across literally every genre and one of my favorites to listen to whenever i feel like i'm in a slump or like my energy isn't quite as high vibe you know is you can heal your life by louise hay it's all about how changing your thinking can truly change your life and sometimes it's just the reminder that i need to get back on track i definitely recommend you check out that title on audible but what I love about Audible is that you can listen to not only audiobooks, but also podcasts and Audible originals whenever, wherever you want, whether you're driving to and from work or cleaning the house or doing the dishes. If you want to check out You Can Heal Your Life or any other amazing titles from Audible's huge selection, new members get a free trial and you can get it by going to audible.com slash jills or text jills to 500 500. And there's literally something for everyone on there. So definitely take advantage of that. Again, thank you to Audible. And now let's get into it. The first step to get out of a slump before you try to take any action, before you even try to get out of bed is to evaluate the situation and find the lesson. Every rut, every funk that we find ourselves in has a lesson. And you need to actually think about what brought you to feel like this in the first place. You need to evaluate the situation. Why did this happen? Because what's the point of getting out of this slump if you're just gonna find yourself in another one in a month? If you find yourself getting caught in this constant cycle of ruts, you feel bad for a few weeks, then good for a few weeks, bad for a few weeks, and good for a few weeks. It's because you're not listening to the lesson of the rut. It's because nothing is changing. Every slump has a cause. And if you don't rid yourself of the cause, then you will find yourself falling back into to this same old pattern. I was very much in my slump era in like 2019, early 2020. I kept getting into slumps and I wasn't depressed. There's a difference, but I kept getting into ruts over and over again, just feeling very blah. And at the time I was dipping my toes into the wellness world and I was doing some health coaching and healthy food blogging. And if I got really honest with myself, I knew that that was temporary that it wasn't supposed to be my life path. I wasn't supposed to be a food blogger. Like it was an amazing step, but it wasn't my thing that I was supposed to be sitting with forever. And I also felt very stuck in where I was living. It didn't really make me very happy. And when I got really honest with myself and tried to find the lesson in those slumps, I realized that I needed to make a change. I needed to do something else. Basically, it was time for me to take that next step. I needed to stop focusing on healthy food blogging, focus less on food and more on the mental side of wellness, the self-improvement, mindset, spiritual, feminine energy side. In 2020, I started my YouTube channel and moved across the country and those perpetual slumps stopped happening. Sometimes burnout can be the cause for your slumps. And this is important to know because if you don't evaluate the situation and become aware that you keep getting into slumps because you are constantly burning yourself out, you will never escape the cycle of slumps unless you change the way that you're living your life to stop burning yourself out so much. Every slump has a lesson. And if you don't try to listen to those lessons, then you will keep finding yourself in that same place. Your body and your soul is trying to communicate to you. The next step, ideally again, before you try to focus on any tasks that you need to do, is to focus on your well being and shifting your energy. Getting out of a slump is not just about forcing yourself to be productive again, it's about shifting your energy. And every single step, including this one and every one after, is at its core about shifting your energy. Because when you have good energy, good things follow. When you do work, when you're happy, 
that work is usually better because good high vibe energy sets the tone for everything else. And when you feel good, good things start to happen naturally. The first and fastest way to shift your energy is to focus on your well being. Take a shower, get clean. You're going to reset physically. Forget about all the stuff that you need to do and just get in the shower and clean yourself. Do all the things that make you feel really good. Shave your legs, wash your hair, blow dry it, put on your favorite makeup, favorite lipstick, favorite jewelry, put on a cute outfit. Take a few hours to forget all the things that you're telling yourself that you need to do right now and just 100% completely focus on you on feeling good in your body, good hygiene, feeling good, feeling clean, feeling beautiful. Humans are wired to feel better when we are physically clean. And that act of physically cleansing ourselves and making ourselves beautiful, putting ourselves together, it's a way to energetically cleanse and let go and start anew. Water is very energetically purifying, like showers and baths, that is very energetically purifying. And also getting clean and getting ready gives you a little sense of accomplishment as well. And little wins matter. The state of your physical body is highly correlated with the state of your energy. Your body holds energy. It's like how if you go through a really bad breakup, you might decide to spontaneously cut six inches off your hair and you might regret it in a few weeks, but in the moment it feels really good. It feels freeing and purifying. Like a weight has been lifted off of you. Like you can let that bad energy go because our physical body is so connected to our internal energy. And it's kind of hard to explain, but when you physically cleanse or release or freshen up, it's easier to let go of some of that energetic ickiness as well. When you cleanse your body, some of that stuck stagnant energy goes down the drain along with it. Cleansing your body also cleanses your energy. So get all clean, do all the things, but the trick is to make sure that you are 100% present and focused on yourself in this process and that you're not thinking about all the things that you need to do. You're just going to take that out of your mind for a second and just focus 100% on your physical well-being. Maybe take a whole slow Sunday morning to physically reset. Okay, so now that you did step two and you are physically clean and ready and you took care of yourself, step three is to change your environment. It's so much easier to shift our energy when we change our environment. So tidy up your room or your home and just start to like get things together a little bit in your home space. Nothing feels better or more refreshing than when you cleanse and organize the space that that you live in, but also force yourself to get out of the house, change your environment and get out of the house. Oftentimes when I'm in a slump, one of the last things I want to do is leave the house. And one of the last things I want to do is be social, but sometimes it's actually what you need and it's what's going to help you pull you out of that rut. Get out of the house and go do anything. Go see friends, go walk around the mall and window shop, go take a walk in your favorite nature park, go to a cute coffee shop, go to a workout class. It could literally be anything. Go paint some pottery. It doesn't matter. The point is that you need to go and get out into the world. When you're in a rut and you're trying to get out of it, you need to shake things things up a bit. You need to change your environment in any way you can. Get out of your house, go see friends, cleanse your physical house, clean it up, even if you don't really want to. Because changing your environment is a very quick and intentional way to change your energy. The next step number four is to start small. You're going to break down larger tasks into small little micro tasks. To get out of a slump, you have to start taking action again, especially towards your goals and the things that you need to do. But start small. Temporarily, I want you to let go of your end goals. I want you to let go of the results that you're trying to have in your life. Let go of that mega dream life that you're trying to create just for now, just temporarily let it go. Forget about it and just focus on the little tiny tasks it takes to get there. So basically break your big things that you need to do into small little micro tasks. Turn your to-do list into micro to-dos. For example, let's say that you need to write a 3000 word article for work. Don't think about the entire 3000 word article. Instead, break it down. If the first thing that you need to do is just do some research and throw all your messy thoughts onto a page, then that is micro task number one. And that's all you have to think about in that moment. 
that's it. You need to take small actions to get moving again. And it feels a lot more achievable to simply open up your computer and just start doing some research as opposed to writing a whole 3000 word article. It just feels a lot less daunting. But here's the thing is that oftentimes once we get going, we start gaining that momentum. And one thing that I have learned that is really important is that we don't always just get energy from sitting around and waiting for it. Sometimes we can generate energy. Sometimes the energy creates the action and sometimes the action creates the energy. And I'm not just talking about motivation. I'm not just talking about high vibe energy. I'm talking about actual physical energy, aliveness. And it's also the same with motivation. Sometimes that action has to come before the motivation. And sometimes that action is what creates that motivation. Motivation will not always be there. And when you're in a slump, our motivation is usually not very high, but we can generate energy, generate motivation, generate inspiration by taking small, micro actions. It's like getting yourself to go to the gym and exercise. You might not want to do it, but once you have your headphones on and you got your playlist bumping and you're in the environment of other people working out around you, it's just not that hard. The micro action was getting dressed up in your gym clothes and showing up. And that micro action was 90% of the work because once you got there and spent five minutes on the treadmill, you're in the zone and ready to keep going. Even with writing out this video and outlining it all out, I didn't really feel like getting started, but sometimes motivation comes from action. So I said, okay, just 10 minutes. I'm just going to work on this for 10 minutes. And then once 10 minutes happened, I was like, okay, well, I need another 10 minutes because I just didn't finish getting all my thoughts down on the page. I don't want to lose them. And then after 20 minutes, I had generated energy. I had generated momentum and I truly wanted to keep going. The only reason I was able to start was because I reframed a larger task into a much, much smaller one. Small micro actions create major energy shifts. Small micro actions create momentum. Again, forget about your end goals, just temporarily. Just focus on that micro action. Now the last step. Now this one doesn't actually have to be done last. You could do this one at Anytime doesn't matter. But when you are in a rut, you have to force your mind into a state of gratitude. Shift your energy from what's not going well to all the things that are going well, to all the things that you are grateful for. It's easy to feel gratitude when life is all dandy, but when it's not and you're in a rut, it feels hard. It can feel really annoying. It's effort. But part of learning how to be a mature adult is learning how to parent yourself and sometimes doing things that you don't want to do or that you find annoying. When we're in a rut, we're usually focusing on all the things that we don't have or all the things that aren't going well. But if you want to get out of that rut and shift your energy, you have to shift your focus. You have to shift your focus to the good all the things that you already have, all the things that are already wonderful. What you focus on grows. If you want more abundance in your life, focus on the abundance that you already have. If you want more hardship in your life, focus on the things that feel hard. It's as simple as that. When you push yourself and force yourself to see the good, this shifts your energy. This makes it more high vibe. And when you are more high vibe, like I said earlier, everything becomes easier. Good things happen naturally. Now also it's not just about shifting your mind to a state of gratitude, but also to a state of love. And whenever you are feeling like you are in a rut or you are just totally stuck in your mind, go do something nice for someone else. This little trick works wonders. Temporarily, just stop focusing on yourself for a little bit, all your woes, and go do something good for someone else. Surprise your boyfriend with some home-baked cookies. Walk your neighbor's dog for them. Give compliments, hold open doors, buy flowers for your best friend for no reason at all, or write her a nice card. I guarantee you that this will shift your energy and make you feel better. Doing nice things for other people helps your mind get unstuck and again helps us to generate energy, generate momentum, generate inspiration. That is it. But remember though that every slump has a lesson. It's great to shift your energy and pull yourself out of that rut. But if you aren't becoming aware of the underlying reason why that happened in the first place, then you're more likely to find yourself back there again. Slumps are a valuable form of communication. Don't just try to push yourself to escape it before you understand what it's trying to tell you. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give it a like, comment down below, share it with a friend, do all the things. And if you liked this video, you might also like this video, 12 tiny micro habits that actually improved my life. It's all about super micro actionable things to improve the quality of my life. Nothing overwhelming. So I will see you over there or I will just see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.